Podcast Network. the GamerCast Network video game show for Sunday, April 26th, 2009. I'm Chad, this is episode 139, and this week for the roll call, what board game would you like to see made into a video game? And joining us this evening is Phil. Apples to apples. That would be a fairly easy game, I would think, because all the answers are already on a card, and you submit them that would be pretty easy to do so this is the game where you're given a hand of cards like seven cards i think it is and then someone reads a topic like the card would be hatred and you would have to put down a list of things that make you think hatred so you'd have your answers of like hillary clinton babies aids and chicago and then the person that had that put out the word hatred would choose which one of those best represents hatred and then whoever put that card in there would get the point yes wouldn't make a very simple game. It is very simple, but somehow it's fun. Yeah, pretty quick and very high replay value. Moving right along, also joining us is Ivan, if you're still alive. I'm hanging in there. I picked Mousetrap because I liked that game when I was small. What was your favorite trap? I liked the, th- the dude in the bathtub, personally. The little old man, and the ball went through the bathtub, and he, like, flipped over and hit something and then yeah a little shoe kicked a ball and the ball went into the thing and then the thing hit the other thing and it made the guy flip into the bathtub and i guess he got wet because it was a bathtub or he broke his hip because he was old and was getting flipped into a bathtub <laughs> that'd be a good animation in, in that game when he hit the tub you oh, hear the sound hip. of br- breaking bones and just a scream and then it just keeps going the trap just keeps going and also joining us is keith I would have said Blood Bowl, but that's already happening. And after that, I would have to go with a Hero Quest slash Descent type game, which is kind of like a role-playing-esque type board game, where you have your little heroes, they go into a dungeon and kill monsters and find items. Yeah, wasn't a Hero Quest like a Warhammer spinoff or something along those lines? Hero Quest was a Warhammer spinoff. Descent? I don't know what that's a spinoff of, but Games Workshop originally made Hero Quest. That was like the older version, and Descent is kind of like a newer version of Hero Quest. And finally joining us is Bob. I would like to see Candyland the MMO, because I would like to explore the Gumdrop Mountains and Molasses Swamp. And I think the entire game being candy-themed. But you know my twisted brain, everybody would be like a pinata, and you'd chop somebody's head off, and just like candy would go flying everywhere, or maybe like taffy would just start pouring out of their stomach when you slice them open. I just want, like, the most brutal, vicious, candy-based game ever. Instead of arterial bursts of blood, you'd have, like, licorice string? Every- and, like, you'd stab people with sharpened candy canes. <laughs> or, like, you'd have a lollipop war mace and all this crap. I think that would be fun. Got all the zones and everything. I'm looking at the board now. You got Crooked Old Peanut Butter House and Ice Cream Floats and Lollipop Woods. You got, like, ten zones on here already. You know what I mean? It's, it's made. Just go. I would play that. <laughs> I would play that, I too. Would play. It's like American <laughs> McGee's Candyland. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's a winner right there. I'm telling you. What would that be rated? So you're lopping off people's heads and limbs and slicing them open, but it would all be candy coming out. <laughs> You'd have to rate it mature anyway because you played online. And so anybody can say anything. I will gouge out your gumdrop eyes and skull <laughs> your gingerbread head. <laughs> like the most vicious beast in the game would just be some baby that was like wandering around like drooling and like, you know, crunching down on all the chocolate people and everything. Draw a card, direct sunlight, stay on this space for four turns. <laughs> your gummy feet have melted to the board. You cannot move for three turns. <laughs> yeah, I can't top. Candyland. I'm just gonna go with. Uh, I want the. Uh, there was a Buck Rogers. Good game, dude. Good game. Very complicated as hell, though. It was complicated Axis and Allies, if memory serves. Yeah, it's basically Axis and Allies in space, and just. Oh, you know what? All either Buck Rogers or Shogun. Shogun was a good game as well, too. Shogun was from the Axis and Allies company, wasn't wasn't it, Milton Bradley? Yeah, Shogun pretty much was Axis and Allies, just in feudal Japan. I can't argue that those are good games. Excellent choices all around. This week on the GamerCast Network. 
With only two weeks left until Pod Toys' 100th episode, the cast will be desperately attempting to fill time by talking about council-specific DLC and LEGO Rock Band. Sorry. Check out Gamertag Radio for the perfect blend of music and video games. With the new Mythic Maps out, you gotta wonder, are they all we expected them to be? Tune in to Pod Tacular to find out if Assembly made the cut. No, no, I'm not reading this. It's garbage, it's lowbrow, and it's offensive towards midgets. If you really want to kill some brain cells, go listen to Podcastle, Destructoid's Brit Pop Podcast. On the 50th episode of the Sarcastic Gamer PlayStation Podcast, they talk about piracy, Sony PR backpedaling, and wearing women's clothes. Tune in to Uncle Gamer Radio for their own special brand of humor. Discover the community that brings you all these great podcasts and more at GamerCastNetwork.com. Next topic. So, Bob, did you try the architect thing out? Yes, the architect entertainment make your own mission thing for city of heroes i haven't published it yet because it was one of those things where you know that you can do a million things so you got to get used to the interface a little bit it's robust and pretty easy at the same time and it has the kind of limitations that come along with that where you can very quickly make a very boring mission if you want something other than okay run into the base beat up the boss yay you're done it, it takes a little bit of work because they gave you the option to like string tasks together so like plant all of the bombs and then as soon as you plant the bombs you get ambushed by some guy and then as soon as the ambush is done the boss shows up and then you have to kill him too and a lot of people have done some really kind of cool and creative stuff with it it's fun they could do a lot more with it give you a little more freedom with like where to place guys on the map and everything else but i guess that would have run into problems with you know balancing and but not. But yeah, it's pretty cool. What What is your quest based around, if we might ask? Left 4 Dead. Ah. <laughs> well, there's several things that I enjoy doing in the game. One is killing hordes of monsters all at once, so I made up my own kind of zombie guys. And you can set up the, um, the monster placement in the game so it ramps, which means they start off with a whole bunch of really weak ones, but by the time you get to the end, they're all really tough. Another thing I like doing is burning buildings down, so I have the next part you set fire bombs all inside of a building and yeah growing up the fire department hated him they hated yeah, his guts yeah what, what, you just randomly burn buildings just for fun in city of villains i do <laughs> Not they were <laughs> empty i mean there might have been a squatter or two but they don't count as real humans it was just filled with zombies i mean there's really no other way to deal with a situation like that than to burn the place down or nuke it from orbit. Right. Again, why we wouldn't be good generals. <laughs> Our complete and utter lack of other people's lives. Ah, just burn it and move on. That way they can't use it. Okay, there we go. Next topic. Okay, so Hong Kong arcades. I will tell you what I know, what I've seen. <laughs> oh, the things I've seen. The things I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some good things and some other things and those kind of things, but... We'll go on. We'll start with one thing. So a lot of things then? <laughs> yes, a lot of things. Okay, so I've, I've been to a couple of the bigger arcades. And by bigger arcades, usually these ones have like kind of three different zones. They have the one zone, which is your more normal kind of games, where you'd find your Street Fighter. We're not interested in that. Come on, get to the good stuff. <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> they, they really aren't either. I mean, they only have a few usually a couple of those kind of games around. They don't really have many of those kind of normal games. More than normal games are the light gun games or the peripheral base games like Drum Mania and Guitar Freaks. Finger bang the cheerleader or whatever the hell that one was. <laughs> yeah, what was the, uh, proc I think it was Proctology the Game or something where you had to fist somebody or something like that. So that was Japan. That was Japan's game. Oh, so instead of fist them, what, you, you, you use someone else's? Fist? Foot? Foot? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> the big toe tickle. <laughs> the tickle tickle. <laughs> I have not seen any games like that. Now, what I've seen is the normal light gun games. I saw one that had the most unique name was something along the lines of Complete Destruction, the Utter Ultimate Machine Gun Blow Up Game or something like that. Nice. A weird name. However, the game itself didn't even look good. It looked like any plain, you know, Virtua Cop, Time Crisis kind of game. Nothing really stand out. I played another one with our fan in Hong Kong, Joe, when he was showing me around. We played the Rambo light gun game, which hasn't made it over to the States and I don't think ever will, because it really isn't a very good game. If it wasn't called Rambo and they didn't shove clips in your face every few minutes from the movies, 
you wouldn't be able to tell it was a Rambo game. It could have been anything. Yeah, it could have been anything. And actually, the game gets kind of confusing because at certain points, you're co-op fighting, and it kind of like wants only one person to shoot somebody and doesn't actually tell you to do that. And then if you miss the one shot, you lose and lose life. And it's like, okay. And there's a hand-to-hand -hand combat part where you got to either push a button off the screen or shoot the screen at a side or something. They didn't tell you and then just kind of like saying, you fail. And like, okay, I know I fail, but... <laughs> you gotta kind of give me a little something to go on. I know I suck, but I need to know why. You just, it doesn't count if you don't explain it. <laughs> are the peripherals all disgusting and sticky like they are in the United States from six-year-olds playing them all the time? Actually, most of the arcades are restrict from 18 under, 16 under. But uh, most of the peripherals, yeah, they, you want to take some uh, hand cleaner with you when you get done. Especially if you have, after you play Guitar Freaks or uh, Drum Mania. The Drum Mania game, though, that thing is really insane. I, I was watching Joe was playing it on, like, expert mode, and it was just flying. I, I don't think Rock Band goes that difficult. I have faith that NC could do it. So is there anything new in Adventive coming out in the arcade market? I mean... Oh, you know what? They had some collectible card game arcade games. There was one for soccer, and there was one kind of like a Dynasty Warriors kind of game where you had your cards, you had a board, an area in front of the screen... And you would put your cards down, like for the soccer game, you would put out your team. Those cards would determine what players you have in the game, and you have a very simple interface for actually playing soccer. You know, it wasn't anything really overly complicated. And for the Dynasty Warriors one, it was like you were laying the cards out, and how you move them dictated how your guys would attack, what items they would use, what bonuses they would do, that kind of stuff. So those ones were kind of unique. I, I hadn't seen a collectible card game, arcade game before. Has anybody here played a Battletech VR simulation game? Yeah, those things are cool. For, for those who haven't played these, these are games where you actually get into a pod. You're simulating fights in battle mechs. And over here, since Gundam is huge, they have a Gundam version of that, which is newer. It's, it's like the past couple of years it was made, I think. Remember the Battletech one had a very small monitor? This one, they, sh they have like a projection screen you're sitting in, so it's like 180 degrees in front of you. So you have like below your feet, in front of you, and above you. It's all really nice. So, I didn't get a chance to play that one, but they actually had that in arcades here. Next topic. Also, in arcades over here, you find pointless games for getting coins. Instead of getting tickets like Ski Shoot, you get uh, coins instead of tickets? Yeah, but the thing is, in tickets, you can actually turn those in and get things. I don't think you can turn these coins in and get anything. Just coins. It's just getting more coins to keep playing <laughs> the damn game. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. <laughs> then I found the really pointless games, which are the horse racing games. And the horse racing is big over here. Horse racing is huge. And in the arcades, they actually have lots of horse racing games. They have ones that are just betting fake money. This is not for real money on horses that go around. You know, you've probably seen these kind of ones and things on TV and that kind of stuff. It's just like fake little horses running around a track. And you just bet money who's going to win. Do you get any tickets or anything out of that? No. It's just to feed your gambling need without actually having to go in deep with the mob but do you have to pay money to get the fake credits to play or yeah you're you're wasting real money but you're not getting anything out of it <laughs> wow don't you understand it's not even betting it's just give us money <laughs> you don't win give us more money you still don't win. I have a game. It's called Insert Quarter Here. And it's just a big bank. And you just walk up and put a quarter in. I have a game. It's called Insert Toe Here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You could be at a track betting on real horses instead of sitting at an arcade. Maybe they're just really poor and can't afford to go to the actual track and bet on real horses. Oh, yeah. One other thing, too. And if you are really poor and decide to take money from the triad, don't. On the streets of Hong Kong, you will see people begging for money and these people look like they've been through meat grinders like their fingers are all broken their limbs are all chopped off it looks like they've been poured having you know burned somebody poured burned on them it was awful <laughs> <laughs> they uh, poured burning oil on them uh, and then joe basically confirmed what i thought these guys had gotten in deep with the uh, triad they had taken money and lost it mo most probably horse racing see that's why that game is popular in hong kong because then you get to keep your fingers your face <laughs> your toes and everything else and still get to gamble on horses 
So have you actually seen any triad people wandering around yet? With the crazy tattoo and a machete. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just don't wander the streets. <laughs> probably seen them. I probably just don't know I've seen them. You know, they probably wear shirts to cover up the tattoos. And- it's like asking, did you have you seen anybody from the mob when you went to New York? You probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw my grandfather's friends. <laughs> Next topic. Mailbag! Mailbag. Mailbag. <sighs> Okay, uh, here was someone emailing us, asking us if we heard about the whole Wild Peggle thing from Jeff. Yay! I don't know Jeff, so no, I didn't hear about it from him. Well, I'll tell you what he said. So what is worse than smoking crack and ice at the same time? Play Peggle and WoW. That's right, my VGS friend, you can now play Peggle from Azeroth. There is one cool thing about it, you can use Peggle to decide who gets loot. There is a slash Peggle loot command that lets everyone take one shot on a random map. The person with the best score wins the item. I didn't know that. How is it, Ivan? It's Peggle. It's a dumbed-down version. There's only two guys that you can pick from. I haven't tried doing the Peggle loot thing, and uh, I also haven't tried. I think you can play other people. You can do, like, multiplayer kind of thing. It's Peggle. I can't believe that's not a significant fault with the game, that you need to have other games within the game because there's so much waiting while you're playing the game. No one views that as something that's wrong. That's just like, oh, well, no, you can play Bejeweled or Peggle. I mean, God. I do agree that that is, that is an, but that's always been the th- something we've always hated about every MMO, though, is the travel time. If it helps, I haven't played it a lot because I haven't had a lot of time to play it. I mean, yeah, you can play it while you're on a flight path or something. Flight paths in Northrend, the, the new area... I mean, from one side of the continent to the other is, is like five minutes at most. Enough time to take a piss and get a drink. Right. I mean, that's usually what I do is I'll, I'll do that or I'll alt-tab out and go do some quick web surfing or something. By the time I get back, you know, I'm already there. So That makes me feel a little better, actually, that you're not playing Warcraft just so you can play Peggle. Next topic. Here's a message from Winston. I'm a junior in high school, and I am in AP Computer Science. And we had some downtime as we wait for the AP exam and we were allowed to program any game we wanted for a grade. A lot of classmates did like Connect 4 or Battleship, stuff like that, but I decided to make my own very basic text-based role-playing game. Yeah! Go Winston! I say basic because there are 16 rooms, each with a monster in it. So I have finished all the hard coding stuff, but I need help with the creative part. I need a name for the game, three types of monsters, and three types of classes. Candyland, the MMO. Fudge Warlord, uh, Taffy Eviscerator, um... And a Pixie fair, uh, pixie Dust Fairy. The Gumdrop Golem. Nice. <laughs> that could be a monster you fight. It'd be a Gumdrop Golem. Were those your three classes? Yeah, the Fudge Warlord is a good class. Actually, you know, you, you why not be a Gingerbread Man? That could be like a Thief-type class, so you could be a Gingerbread Man. And then a Pixie Dust Fairy could be like your, uh... Your mage type class shooting the uh, the pixie dust. The what are those things? Pixie sticks and monsters. I like the gumdrop golem, a lollipop lich. Nice. Could live in the lollipop woods. I like that a lollipop lich. And a. Uh, we need to keep the alliteration thing going. So I'm trying to think of like the truffle troll. There you go, a truffle <laughs> troll. <laughs> there you go. There's your three bad guys to fight. <laughs> For more reference, see the Candyland board game. Just cross-reference every piece of candy with every D&D monster ever, and if they start with the same letter, you got a winner. <laughs> exactly, you got a winner. I was trying to think of a candy that starts with D so we can have a dragon in there, but... Yeah, you could just have Swedish fish. I mean, that's a monster all on its own. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Video Game Show episode number 139 for Sunday. April 26, 2009. Any ham sandwiches or shattered dream pies to give to the world peoples? I guess we can give one to the Cavs, a ham sandwich to the Cavs for advancing in the playoffs. Good job. Even though I don't really care about basketball, but hey, good job. Ham sandwich to sliced bread. See what I did there? Be sure to check out the GamerCast Network forums at GamerCastNetwork.com slash forums for all the details on the upcoming gaming nights. And send your questions, comments, queries, concerns, or a roll call question to the mailbag at mailbag at videogameshow.org, Skype us at Video Game Show, or call us at 320-300-GAME. That is a standard long-distance call, and all normal fees apply. And that's a wrap. Good night. Uh.
Okay. Okay, peoples. Hit your stop buttons. Oh, gosh. Should I have been recording? <laughs> <laughs> he and stop.